And uh, with that said, I want to uh, ask you to please join me in a warm welcome for the man that keeps the vision of our company in focus, our CEO of ECT, Environmental and Conscious Technology, Mr. Talbot Howard. Appreciate it. <laughs> By the way, this is Doug Davis. He didn't introduce himself. He's our marketing and distribution officer here. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Um, this is a big name. This is a big day. And I've heard uh, one statement that resonated with me since I've been here, and that is that this county is the largest producing county in the nation of oil. So it starts off with a big solution with a big name. Houston, we have a solution. What we're doing here is treating an alternative source of water for drought relief. And this source of water can become something that is bigger than we can all imagine. Because what we're going to do here is lead a type of transition of technology to the next level. Here's a demonstration. given the call to work on this pilot, I jumped on it. I knew it was an opportunity that I could use to be able to show how to use technologies and make them work for America. I looked at the framework of what was going to happen to the state of California. and what is happening around the world. And I saw that there's no choice. I had to go into it full heartedly. With this opportunity, the technology that is coming forward here, I knew would be able to show the public once and for all that we can use non-chemical based solutions and take these solutions to a level that no one else has ever done before. To be able to showcase them in a way that creates educational acumen, job skills, and new forms of wealth. The wealth that we're talking about is oil, mineral resources, water. Through this platform, we know that the solutions work. Sure, there are going to be those that doubt it, but when they see it, they'll believe it. Thank you for listening, looking, and checking out what we're about to show you. Now, the team here that we have is leading basically Origin Clear's technology to the market, plus my own design engineering team and consecutively, probably between us both, we have about 70 patents. Now, what we're being able to do is launch technology that answers uncertain times that's ready for manufacturing and deployment or marketing. Now, there's a large need of water. Now, obviously, we see the, 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 the water coming down through the canal, and, and that's about 20% of 4.7 trillion gallons of water that's coming from up north. Well, of that 20%, 70% of it goes into the agriculture. The community here is dependent upon agriculture. The nation basically gets 50% of its produce from this area. What you do here sets the trends. It designs the next type of evolution of technology. Now in North America, you know, historically there's about $20 billion used in trying to prevent harmful chemicals from getting into the water that we use. We all know what's happening in Flint, Michigan. We hear about the, the food that's being taken off the car and the, uh, the stores in Costco. Um, we don't want this water to end up going towards somewhere where we know it's ending up. So what we do, it, if we can do something that succeeds with a large volume of people, it, help will, it will help evolve these technologies in society, for sure. Now, 
as Christine said, she has litigation that's coming about against her. If you're in the oil business, you're going to have issues coming up against you very soon. It's something that you can't ignore. I'm just going to tell you like it is. You're going to have a lawyer on every billboard trying to find a way to get into your oil pockets. It's just what's going to happen. If they get a rash, if, if their crops get something that causes their, their uh, cattle to, to become sick, they're going to find every reason in the book to be coming after you. Now, it's all because there's no solutions that are bolt-on, that are not plug-in ready, that can't be deployed in a way that cleans the water to a level that removes the toxins. The level of technology that we're deploying here just got vetted in East Bay up in Silicon Valley for removing algae, the algae blooms. We're talking about cyanobacteria. There's been no technology in Earth, according to the Silicon Valley East Bay Authority, that could remove cytotoxins out of existence. We did it. Now, our cost here, we're cleaning water without chemicals. Oops. Basically, we're breaking down the price here of uh, the water to about $500 per acre foot. The actual cost for us to be able to clean an acre foot is $172. I'm having to be very proactive in looking at raising the price up to be able to cover our cost. We have to be able to put this technology out in a way where we can initially cover our capex. That's a better solution than what's out there available. Now, in looking at the chemical aspect, again, I said we're using things without chemicals. Doug, bring this out here, please. The market right now is basically looking for the next catalytic converter of water. As we all know in the uh, 70s and 80s, I wasn't really born yet probably, but uh, the Los Angeles basin had issues with the smog. And an ingenious inventor came up with the ability to, uh, to uh, take off the excess hydrocarbons, which is about 40 to 60 percent of the water, of the uh, um, gasoline that's unburned and find a way without chemicals to be able to burn those hydrocarbons off. And now we drive into the basin and you don't see smog. Well, that's no different from what we're doing today. This is the existing catalytic converter of water. The largest oil companies in Kern County are using technology like this. The problem with this catalytic converter is simply put, it only lasts every 4,000 miles. You have to go in there and clean it. You have to change it out. That, co that costs money, that's downtime. And what it does is, because you have to go in there and clean it and have the downtime, it clogs up the membrane industry. The membrane industry is about $317 billion. It's not gonna go away. So what we have is a solution that does not have to be cleaned every 4,000 miles. Ours is like the car catalytic converter that can go 100,000 miles. You, you don't have to change it every 4,000 miles. We can do ours every five years. So when I say we have a solution that's non-chemical based, it's that easy to understand. It's the catalytic converter of water. So basically, when you have an innovation solution that's as truly innovative as this, it, it helps expand knowledge. We're looking to align this with those that have the common interest, that want to help the farming industries, that want to bring things to the next level to help the people it serves. We're very passionate about what we do, and we want to help those to be able to understand that what you do here sets the trends. Policy is going to be created in this city that the state will follow. And then you align that policy with the nation. Now, the, the rewards here are beneficial, and it gives good actions for the goodwill. We're looking for the right type of leaders. CSUB is a, is a leader here. They're, they're working behind the scenes with us to be able to exploit this technology because it's the right thing to do. They understand the science is going towards these new types of water innovations without chemicals. Does it make sense? Our solutions matter. And frankly, the demand is coming upon this city and in this state that you've got to deal with. You've got to step up and face the facts. Now, this is not just a bet on humanity, it's a guarantee. 
When I say a guarantee, well, you're going to create jobs, lots of jobs. You're going to create new skill sets, new types of opportunity, and value. The value that you're creating is recovered hydrocarbons. 10 to 15 percent, depends on the, each well, can come off as actual barrels of oil that's lost in translation through the current existing systems. Now, the other level of technology that we're going to get to in the future is about less evapotranspiration. It's one thing to clean water, but there's actually a structure to be, able, to be able to identify how you can make that water wetter. That's new terminology in a lot of ways. I'm not sure if anybody's really heard it in this room, but there's ways to align the molecular structure of water to make it travel faster. And when you make the water travel faster, you're able to create a better growth rate, a better growth density. You hear about all these almond farms that are creating hybrid trees that can go 30% faster. Well, what if you could treat the water to allow the crops to grow 30% faster? By molecularly aligning the molecules, the polarity of it. That's the science that we're bleeding edge on. We know where we're going with this and we know how it's going to benefit the actual industry long term. Now, the perfect solution means you've got to be able to demand the, demand the problem, conquer the problem. Well, in the engineering that we're scaling up, that I'm teaming up with Origin Clear with, my engineers have been able to scale up the capability of being able to stack these systems, 16 to 18 of them in a, in a 40 foot container to handle an 8,000 gallon per minute system. Well, with the situation with Christine and the Water Valley Management, they have 500,000 barrels of oil that they're going to have to treat daily. So effectively, we're probably going to need about 10 of these systems to get to that level. So we're either going to be able to break them up into individual systems, uh, smaller pods, or have 40-foot containers and do a central processing system that could be and handle the facility and the demand. Ultimately, we're going to get these systems to, the, to be transported in a way where they can go around dr just in time. We launched these innovations in 2014 and 15, and I spoke to the Contra Costa Water County District Manager about how do you make them work for the people. Their focus at that point in time was desalinization. Desalinization, it consumes about 45% of the total energy output of a given community. So to actually have something that was so cost effective that runs about 12 cents an hour, it was too disruptive at that point in time. So you had to be able to align the policy and now it's the perfect storm. You actually have a problem that's making, that's making you face these issues. So the technology at that point in time in 2014, we got it into SERVPRO, SERVPRO, the Disaster Relief Agency. We were the first company that was able to get it into a point where insurance companies would pay and foot the bill. Now you guys are facing a crisis here. In a lot of ways, you're looking at drought. There should be insurance capabilities and responsibility that come and step up to the plate, and that's what we're going to go after for you. So how do we do this together? Basically, we start out consulting. Every person is, every oil company is unique, just like Christine. We're dealing over there with the Edison pilot there where they get 12 pilots and 12 oil companies that have been there probably since 1959. I know the company's been in existence, existence since uh, 1932, but we have to consult them on that individual pilot to come up with what is a solution for their produce water that's coming through. We gather the information and we support with the right type of system. This is just like a gateway computer back in the day when you ordered a, a computer that was personalized. This is a box that's gonna be personalized for you. you Gotta figure out how much mega RAM that you need in the box. Well, we're gonna figure out the actual technology that you need to have in the box. Our technology basically extracts the hydrocarbons off initially and it makes the process of filters and membranes uh, last longer. So we're a beneficial technology for anyone that's in the actual water space. So as we implement these solutions, we're going to be able to start operating them on an efficiency SCADA system, data centric. What matters is that you have the ability to gather data and be able to utilize that data to improve your efficiencies. And we'll be able to combine technologies into the platform that help possibly recover more over the process. Now, implementing them just in time. 
as we implement these tech technologies just in time, we start to discover that there's other possibilities to help within society use these technologies just in time. I'll get to that in a second. So as you look at how the, how the actual ECT model goes, we want people to spread the availability of this technology to those that are in the industry to help share into the profit structure of what we're going to launch. Launching it out means you've got to have the right type of uh, way of thinking to enable these technologies to become an offset value. In the situation with Christine and the Valley Water, they're a nonprofit. They can't afford the rates that a for-profit company would in Texas. So we have to discount it significantly. In that process of uh, discounting the actual application, we will be able to manage what is the carbon credits, the air quality offsets, the water quality offsets, and help utilize the, the PR benefits of them being as a nonprofit and tying in with what we're doing. Now, as these technologies become available, when I said just in time a little while ago, heaven forbid you guys live on a fault. What happens if an actual earthquake happens? How are you going to have clean water? You can go three days, you can go a week without food, but you can't go three days without water. So you gotta have a solution here that teams up the right type of alignment of these technologies to be available for those such as FEMA. We've stepped out into the right political realms in Washington, D.C. to be able to ensure that we could find a way to get congressional funding to support this. Ultimately, we want to bring these systems to market and enable you to have it like a utility provider. Give us a tipping fee. In the meantime, we will also have the ability, if you have to buy the system from us, to have the offset value. There are a lot of people that are in the oil industry that need offsets. It's a tax write-off. So those that are looking for structures like this and a plan and a way to be able to bring it to market, I know we're the solution. That's the reason I continue to say, Houston, we have a solution. Thank you for your time. Yeah, it's proprietary. Um, actually, I mean, we're basically using uh, a very similar technology is that we just don't shed ions. So in the process of that aluminum rod right there, they're shedding, and that's causing a degradation of the actual aluminum, and it's causing downstream pollution. Ours does not shed. Thank you. Thank you.